A couple of months ago, a federal judge in Washington, D.C. sentenced nine persons to prison terms of up to ten years for a variety of crimes to which they had pleaded guilty. Which may not sound unusual on the face of it, except that these nine were among the top leaders of a religion. The Church of Scientology. Along came an unknown group calling itself United Churches of Florida, looking for a place to settle. Well, it turned out that United Churches was in fact the Church of Scientology, and that initial deception infuriated these citizens of Clearwater. Their former mayor, Gabe Cazares, was bitterly skeptical of the church. L. Ron Hubbard has stated that Scientology is extremely wealthy, that it has the money to buy cities and even countries. That destructive cult has to know that sparkling clear water is not for sale. The mayor continued his attacks, and for his pains, he was placed on the church enemies list. They set out to smear him with sexual innuendo to ruin him politically. I read to him from a church memo called from documents we acquired in our investigation. The purpose of this operation is to actually get real documentation into the files of Mexican licensed bureau or bureaus stating that the mayor got married in Mexico to some Mexican gal 25 years ago who is not his wife, so puts the mayor in a position of bigamy. This can be accomplished either by a bribe or a covert action. So what you're saying uh, was that they were trying to destroy your character, assassinate without, your character. Without, without uh, question. Reporter Betty Orsini was doggedly pursuing the story of the church's undercover campaign in Clearwater. So, the St. Petersburg Times wound up on their enemies list. Scientologists stole files from the paper's legal offices. Its reporters and editors were harassed. Only, says editor Eugene Patterson, only because the St. Petersburg Times was covering a news story. That's all we were trying to do. Find out who they were, what they were up to, so that we could inform the community. What about the reporter who was involved in the investigation? First, they uh, slandered her to me in an effort to compromise her job. Slandered her? Saying she was printing lies, uh, that she was not giving their side, that she was being unprofessional. After that, they went after Mrs. Orsini's husband. He heads up a small charity here in St. Petersburg, uh, Easter Seals. He's the executive director. And once they found they could not get Betty Orsini off the story, or get the St. Petersburg Times off it, the next thing we knew, an anonymous letter, a poison pen letter, charging criminality to Mrs. Orsini's husband landed on our city desk and that of two or three other newspapers in Florida. The man was innocent, and I think they thought that we were some Bush League newspaper that they could scare out of the box. Paulette Cooper wrote a book back in 1971 called The Scandal of Scientology. Now, the Scientologists did not want you to read this book. To try to silence her, the so-called guardian's office of the church cooked up a scheme to steal some of her stationery and make it appear that she had sent the church office two bomb threats. I read from one of the forgeries. James, this is the last time I'm warning you. I don't know why I'm doing this, but you are all out to get me. I'll give you one week before Scientology is an exploding volcano. I'll knock you out if my friends won't. Right. And as a result, I was arrested. I was indicted on three counts. I faced up to 15 years in jail if I was convicted. The whole ordeal fighting these charges took eight months. It cost me $19,000 in legal fees. I went into such a depression. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't write. I went down to 83 pounds. Another church plot against Cooper was named Operation Freakout, intended to get her placed in a mental institution until she stopped writing about Scientology. Church officials even launched a graffiti campaign against Cooper. They put my name up on walls in New York City where I live with my phone number so people would call me. They put my name on pornographic mailing lists so that I would get all kinds of disgusting mail. You see, for years I was saying that these types of things were going on. And people thought, well, what is she talking about? This is a church. And finally, after 11 years, I see that everything I said was true and that Scientology turned out to be worse than anything I ever said or even imagined. The two church leaders went on to explain that those attacks were made only in response to perceived threats to the existence of the church. You set out to smear Gabe Gazaris, the then mayor of Clearwater, smear him with sexual innuendo, harassed his wife on the telephone, the church of Scientology. You must admit, if I lived in Clearwater, if you lived in Clearwater and weren't a member of the Church of Scientology, you'd say, what in the world has this got to do with religion? I think that we, that, that uh, part of us, part of we, the Guardian's office, mm -hmm. 
fell into the arrogance of the end justifies the means, which is which is which is wrong and alien to Scientology. After confessing wrongdoing by church officials, the two nonetheless insisted that the church's founder, L. Ron Hubbard, had nothing to do with such methods. So I read from a Hubbard policy letter. If there will be a long-term threat, you are to immediately evaluate and originate a PR campaign to destroy the person's repute and to discredit them so thoroughly that they will be ostracized. Brad, I have never ever seen an issue, and I'm familiar with this documentation. I have never seen such an issue. Well, I have... Have you seen that? Yes. Yes. Now this, at this in this form, is... May I see it in just a second? Yes. It says here... Don't ever tamely submit to an investigation of us. Make it rough, rough on attackers all the way. You can get reasonable about it and lose. Banish all ideas that any fair hearing is intended and start our attack, the Scientology attack, with their first breath. Never wait, never talk about us, only them. Use their blood, sex, crime to get headlines. Don't use us. Yes, that's, that's, that's yeah. your that's, man. That's right. It was apparent that although the two church leaders seemed eager to plead guilty to church wrongdoing, they apparently had not communicated any comparable sense of guilt to these church members. You say that ethics are very important to a Scientologist. Very, very to me. Well then please try to help me understand. The ethics involved in trying to smear the mayor of Clearwater, in trying to get the job of the fellow who runs the St. Petersburg Times. All true and all acknowledged. In the name of religion? Doesn't that make you say, hey, my religion would do a thing like that? In the name of survival of a religion? If these people are trying to knock the religion down, what do you do? Sit back? I mean, look, you know, this is not the first persecution of a religion. And you really believe that Gabe Cazares and the St. Petersburg Times and Paulette Cooper were trying to destroy Scientology? Oh, do Cooper right, has, I do. Therefore, you commit crimes going after Paulette Cooper. You forge letters that bring her up on federal charges that she's going to be a bomb thrower. You you no, destroy no. her name. You you uh, indulge in sexual in innuendos. A church does that, Mr. Penninger? Well, I was not informed about all this. You, really? You read? No, I don't. You know what I do when I read that kind of stuff about Scientology? I don't even read it. Why? Because it doesn't interest me. Let the people who have to handle that handle it. Because I have too much to do, and I can't be bothered with that kind of stuff. Let them handle it. But these are people... Because we will survive. What you seem to be saying, in effect, is to Clearwater, mea culpa, we were wrong, our shame, now let's move ahead. Exactly. There was a time if you were worried about your son or daughter being in a cult, you could get help from a small nonprofit organization called the Cult Awareness Network, or CAN, for 20 years the nation's best known resource for information and advice about groups it considered dangerous. Among them was Scientology, a church not known for turning the other cheek. Cynthia Kisser says the church's final assault on CAN began when hundreds of Scientologists from around the country wrote virtually identical letters asking to become members of CAN. Included among them was this model letter with instructions to be put in your own words. Fearing, she says, the church was out to take control of CAN, Kisser denied their applications to join. CAN was then hit with a barrage of lawsuits by individual Scientologists claiming religious discrimination. I got hit with 12 suits in one week. In all, CAN was hit with more than 50 lawsuits. Even though most of the suits were eventually dropped or won by CAN, she says the cost of defending them, nearly $2 million, drove CAN to the brink of bankruptcy. Today, CAN is under new management. Last year, a member of the church bought CAN's name, logo, and hotline number in bankruptcy court for $20,000. Hello, Cult Awareness Network. Now when you call looking for information about a cult, chances are the person you're talking to is a Scientologist.